One about failure. You know, all of us fail, and yet at the same time, some of those failures are very small. We don't really worry about them too much. But other things, other failures in our life stick to us like glue, like, like Velcro, and Satan just keeps throwing it in our face in order to kill off our hope for the future. Because what we do, we take the failures that we're experiencing in the past, the present, and we project those onto the future. Now, we said that hope has to do with something, of course, in the future. If you don't really uh, have a future, then you know, you're without hope. And so, and we've said that, that uh, now faith, it says, is the substance, the assurance of things hoped for. That definition of faith, the first part of that definition has to do with our hope. In other words, it's not wishful thinking. It's rather saying, God, I know something's gonna happen good in the future and I'm looking forward to it. It's, it's faithfulness, it's saying I'm gonna get there and because of that, that changes the way we think. It changes the way our decisions are made. In fact, your character and your choices in life will be greatly determined by how you foresee your future. And so if failure is sticking to you, if, if you're not failing forward, but rather you're failing backward, it's gonna have a great effect in your life. And as we turn to John chapter 21, we find the perfect example of a man failing and then being restored by the Lord Jesus Christ. Because as we open this passage, you remember what has happened with the apostle Peter. Peter in the upper room was told by the Lord and the rest of the disciples were told by the Lord that you're gonna scatter around. I'm gonna be, you know, this is gonna happen to me and I'm gonna, you're gonna scatter. And Peter said, Lord, if everybody else leaves you, I'm with you, I've got you back. I'll never leave you. And Jesus said this, he said, Peter, before the rooster crows in the morning, you will deny even knowing me three times. Wow, that's something, isn't it? And that happened. And so how do you recover from that? How do you recover from that kind of failure? How does God rescue us from that failure? Because one thing about the message of the gospel, it is the message of the second chance. So let's look at it together. We look at John chapter 20, and we find that verse 31 is a good conclusion to the book, if that was gonna be it. Because he says, John says, but these have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Now that's a great point to end the book. But he thinks to himself, you know, you know, the Holy Spirit was inspiring him, of course. I've got a friend by the name of Peter, and he's messed up. So I need to tell the rest of the story as a word of hope and encouragement to all those who read the book. And so we find the story of the restoration of Peter. Now, I want us to look at four things in this passage. Number one, I want us to look at the reality of failure because we all fail. And then number two, I want us to look at the power of it it can have in our life in a negative way. But then thirdly, I want us to look at the ministry failure can have to us. And then finally, the most important thing probably for you, uh, you're thinking is how do you get rescued and restored from it? And so let's look at it. First of all, the reality of it. As I said, he denied uh, knowing the Lord th uh, three times. In fact, in Matthew, it says this. Now, Peter was sitting outside the courtyard and a servant girl came to him and said, you too are with Jesus the Ga Galilean, but he denied it before them all saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he had gone out to the gateway, another servant girl saw him and said to those who were there, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, surely you, are, you two are one of them for, for even the way you talk gives you away. They began to curse and swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a rooster crowed. And Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said, before a rooster crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Wow, now here was Peter. He, he really does come across as an arrogant gentleman, uh, really self-sufficient. And so this just tore him apart. He had denied even knowing the Lord and, and the time that the Lord needed his loyalty the most, needed him beside him the most, he had failed him. And so you and I realize that we fail as well. In fact, that's what the whole gospel is about. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, not all failure is moral failure, but 
all moral failure or all, all moral immorality is, is failing the Lord. And so we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus Christ came, died on the cross for our sins, rose again on the third day. That's the gospel. We've got to receive him into our heart. So all of us have sinned. In fact, you look...